You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button on our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springville, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for February 22nd, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live once again from the Twitter jail conjugal visit trailer. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. I don't know if they changed the sheets in this trailer, Drift Glass. It's it's, it's uh, taxpayer funded. It's pretty cheap. <laughs> They got one of those big, long roller papers, like at the doctor. You just pull off a sheet, tear it off. Ew. You know, I'm scribbling my manifesto on that thing. Uh-huh. Let me tell you, it's pretty scorching. It's going to get me banned from Twitter again, I'm pretty sure. So when do you when do you get out of Twitter jail? You know, Blue Gal, Twitter time is, jail time is slow time. <laughs> so it's really hard to tell. Probably tomorrow evening okay. sometime. Friday um, evening, maybe. Friday evening, you know. Well, we we have uh, plans for Friday evening. We're going to go do trivia night. So uh-huh. that's kind of our date thing we do here in the Midwest. We go and do trivia. We do. With a team from church. And we're pretty good. We're pretty good. We usually, we won a couple times, but we usually, we always finish in the top four. I'm telling you, we should just change, we should just hustle um, um, trivia contest. That's really should be <laughs> our, our secondary <laughs> income source should just be travel in the Midwest, hustling Twitter. I don't know nothing about science fiction. I hope they don't show up on the trivia contest. <laughs> I like the Star I hope Trek. I no knitting questions or mm-hmm. <laughs> things about autism or I'm not much of a reader. Or you know. podcasting or liberal politics or the history mm-hmm. of the American presidency or nothing like that. Yeah. Library? I'd rather be caught dead than in the library. Uh-huh. Hustling. Yeah, oh, sure. Sure. My problem is it's it's for charity and you I give know. the money. We always, our team always gives the money back we do. to the charity that's sponsoring the. We'd be night, rich so. now, frankly. Frankly, we'd be crazy rich if we didn't give the money back every time. <laughs> yeah, it's never a, worth it. No, it's, and these are it's it's, it's fun. fun. It's for fun, and it's friends and, and neighbors, and we know everybody there. And it's usually there's one one table full of research librarians. Yeah, who that, just that plow everybody. Fuck yes, you, yes. Fuck but, you. but our team has a good balance. We have a sports guy. Yeah. You and I are kind of the old movie and politics history, U.S. Mm-hmm. history buffs. Yeah. And then there are people that know every building in Springfield, Illinois. And right. when they do those visual ones, okay, we're going to show you old buildings and you have to tell us what they were in 1971. There's yeah. a guy who knows all that, you know, so. And we're, we're, we're gapped. We're missing in our lineup a good uh, music uh, yeah, but genius. The music ones are so hard. Because yeah. sometimes See, they'll, they will do just tunes from 1972. Yeah. And it's sometimes that's hard to n- remember each and every one of them. But. Well, and, and you can just see around the table, that's Creedence Clearwater Revival. That's Pink Floyd. <laughs> that's Johnny Cash. And then suddenly you hit like the mid 80s. Like, I have no idea who that is. Right. And then and, uh, you usually do because you're, you know, you're more hip than I well, am. Well, because I'm in the car with two teenage girls right. and they do listen to modern music. Yeah. But I was I was even shocked. I went through the red carpet pictures, the Getty pictures of the Grammys this year just uh-huh. to look at the dresses. Sure. And there were something like 64 red carpet pictures from the Grammys. And I knew four of the artists. I mean, I just I don't listen to top 40 music. But we're both kind of heartbroken today because yes, uh, one of the monkeys died. Peter died in the monkeys, and I've been singing the monkeys all morning. The and, original uh, fake, the original fake TV boy band, fake TV boy band, and mm-hmm. and it was that's my childhood hurts now. Right. You know yeah, exactly it does. Yeah. So I was born in 1963. So the monkeys were, you know, when I got home from kindergarten, I would have the monkeys to listen to. This so. was the the part about the banana splits I always liked because you never knew who the actors were. They yeah. were just, you know, characters. So uh-huh. it would never break your heart to learn that the last of the banana splits was found today <laughs> in, a, you know, in a warehouse. Yeah. And auto the I don't want to hear that. I don't want to know any of that. I want to hear <laughs> la, 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 la. That's yeah. what I want. Yep. Yep. And you don't and need I your backstory. Don't really need to know song. it. Right. Mm-hmm. We can sing both of those. It's, it is amazing how your brain... 
reserve space for the theme song to the monkeys and the banana splits. But if only there was does. some sort of competitive contest where you, your knowledge of trivia would be worthwhile <laughs> to have at your disposal. Because I, all I have upstairs in my brain is junk. Just yep. warehouse full of you know useless factoids and Well, and here's the deal. A couple of trivia nights ago, Driftglass had to leave without me for trivia I because I was still editing podcasts. I so. Did. We don't want that. We're not going to let that happen again. We're going to do podcast early. And that means we're going to miss the Friday news dump completely, which we often do anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, We haven't. I'm watching Twitter to see what is happening with the Roger Stone thing. I haven't seen anything yet. Go ahead. By the way, please feel free to rub my face in my uh lack of Twitter. It's not as if you can't look at Twitter, Driftglass. Yeah, that's what makes it. That's what makes it torture, Blue Gal. (laughs) I look out through the cell bars and I look at the world going by and go, thank God I can't interact with these lunatics. Oh, my God. It's a fucking dumpster. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Is it giving you you pain to see that you can't say witty repartee? I sit in the garden and read Thomas More like I do, you know. I read um Jesuit scholars, I read um things like that, you know. Just I'm I'm slowly uh. rewinding my brain to a place where no, what I'm doing is trying to figure out uh I'm I'm writing I'm still writing blog posts. I'm watching how m- much less traffic uh arrives at my door. Uh if I can't uh throw up a uh link to my blog on Twitter. Uh. It is staggering wow. it really is it wow. drops off by you know 70 yeah. percent yep um so it really does matter it is a it is a sewer but it serves the purpose and so i've been writing good stuff i wrote a post today called um mutually assured democracy really which, i haven't yeah. looked at that yet you, that's because i'm not on twitter <laughs> <laughs> well drift class the latest on the roger stone from 27 minutes ago is roger stone is claiming during his court hearing that he thinks crosshairs are Celtic occult symbols. Yeah, they are. And yet and yet he has written multiple times on Instagram that he is in Muller's crosshairs. Well, and the whole thing, I I I was thinking about this today as I contemplated the world for myself. Um that there's such an onslaught of small pieces to this larger story mm-hmm. that just are coming out like a machine gun. Mm-hmm. Um and and Piecing it together is impossible for experts and lay people like us are just sort of leaning into it, hoping it'll, you know, keep our footing. Um, but what it really needs is Walter Winchell. Um, it needs the, it's so routine, the criminality and the corruption and so mm-hmm. forth. Mm-hmm. It really feels, when I think about it in my head, it really feels like it should be in the voice of Walter Winchell narrating an episode of The Untouchables. Oh, wow. Yeah. If I may. Yeah, sure. In the last weeks of February 1929, Robert Mueller and his Untouchables were hitting hard at the Trump empire. Everyday indictments rattled cable news while Mueller led his men with filing after filing. While prosperity stayed around the corner for most Americans, it came out and licked the hands of Trump's lackeys, thugs, and cable news fixes. For them, it had been Rome at the height, at its height under Boss Donald until Robert Mueller moved in to clean up. That's the narration I hear. Wow. It's just one long episode of the fucking Untouchables yep. being narrated by a rat tat tat news guy mm-hmm. who's bringing it all to you. And it won't slow down. This is something, it's like, it's it's turning America into penultimate true detective episode watchers. <laughs> You know, here's what I think is going to happen. See, he, there's a car parked outside, but is it really parked outside? Yeah. This is a trick of the memory. And Robert Mueller, and, and you know what Roger Stone said, it's Celtic symbols. And by the way, Guccifer, and I'm like, you know what? This is not my job. Yeah. Following the day-to-day rabbit hole chase of every little tick of this clock is not my job. But I think you my have job, explained just now why Rachel Maddow's show is number one. On exactly. Cable. Boy, did you just nail it. Exactly right. She tells the story. She she contextualizes what you are watching and why it's important and where it stands in this mm-hmm. sort of larger mm-hmm. narrative better than anybody else, yeah. really. Yeah. Well, we have a new sponsor this week, Drift Glass, for the Professional Left podcast. Do. It's mm-hmm. a fine American-made product. We've been using it for years ourselves. Mm-hmm. And they've now – I'm so excited they've signed on as a supporting fake it's, sponsor it's a big of deal our for podcast. Us. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you it want to tell them about it? Or, I know I'm supposed to sing the jingle, but yes, you want to tell them about well, our new sponsor? Sure. Our, our new sponsor is, of course, uh, Freshly Poured Cat Food. That's right. Let's sing together, shall we? 
this is a song we sing in our kitchen all the time every time we pour out dry cat food so a little a little background every cat has its own theme song thanks to my <laughs> they wife do, they do <laughs> every child has their own theme song that's true thanks to my wife yep and the act of pouring out cat food has its own song and it dry goes cat a little food. something yes it does it's like this freshly poured freshly poured Oh my lord, lord it's, it's freshly, freshly poor. <laughs> See, <laughs> don't worry. We'll up. get we'll get Neil Diamond <laughs> to do the to clean it up and sing the whole thing. It'll be great. We do. We sing freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my lord, it's freshly poured. And it doesn't matter, you know, whether it's pet store organic or dollar store direct, nope. there is no cat food finer day or night than freshly poured cat food oh my lord oh my lord it's, it's freshly, freshly poured. poured yes <laughs> that really so, is our household that that's, that's our house that's mm-hmm. our house mm-hmm. yeah we are also welcoming back laudable audiobooks the best audiobooks for the best people and only the best people how do you get laudable books you, you don't. don't laudable books no you may not subscribe and they also like to rub it in they really do we want to thank Bob Seska for having us on for 90 minutes on Wednesday. We and uh, if you haven't gotten enough of us this week, you'll mm-hmm. get enough of us over at Bob Seska. Yeah. <laughs> but we it had was, such a good time. It was fun. I really did have a good time. It was a fun guy to talk to. And uh, you him- do you want to tell him kind of what we discussed a little bit, just to give him a little preview well, of what Bob if was, they haven't listened yet? Bob was wrong about a few things. <laughs> and I had to straighten him out about a few things. Um, I don't think that's true. I think we just have kind of a family disagreement. This is why I have my own podcast. So um, <laughs> so I can say shit like this and not get. Of course, my sound editor will just nip this right out. No one will ever no, know I said I it. No, it won't. Was, no, it was we have a, a family uh, debate. It was not an argument, a debate over what to, whether never Trumpers, what to do about mm-hmm. them and, and when to talk about them and when not to talk about them. And Bob raised some perfectly valid strategic and tactical questions and points that I, I largely agree with. Right. I think I raised some very valid uh, strategic and tactical points that he saw where I was coming from. Um, generally, mine's, mine comes down to a very simple question. What is the appropriate shibboleth, West Wing fans, for a never-Trumper to use to be trusted by the left? What do they have to say? Is it just calling Donald Trump a shithead? In which case, Ann Coulter is now someone I'm supposed to trust. Which is insane. <laughs> and right. or was it Glenn Beck? Was Glenn Beck trustworthy right up until he wasn't? And is Joe Walsh trustworthy because he thinks Donald Trump's an asshole? Mike Lee, was he trustworthy and then became not so? And Eric Erickson became a not so. Um uh, Steve Schmidt, who, you know, everyone loved watching Steve Schmidt calling Donald Trump at a shithead right up until he started working for Howard Schultz because he doesn't care about the outcome of the election. He cares about lining his pockets because Everyone on this list is a mercenary who will find the most economically advantageous position to take on any given day and take that position. And my larger argument was simply that everyone in politics, everyone in the media, from James Comey to Matthew Dowd to Rick Wilson, all took a, a put a large bet on Hillary Clinton winning the election. Mm-hmm. James Comey mm-hmm. broke FBI rules, fucked her over. Um, screwed up her campaign so that after she won, nobody from the wingnut side of the of the uh, of the media could come back and say you knew she was doing blah 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 emails and you didn't tell us about it and you 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 threw the election to her. So he was burnishing his credentials with the only important media that matters to him, which is the both siderist media, Beltway media, and the right wing media. Uh, Rick Wilson mm-hmm. was taking mm-hmm. a position along with a whole bunch of Never Trumpers that. Well, since she's going to win, we need to position ourselves to take over the party once it collapses, and then we can get in there and rebuild it in our image, and we can spend four years trashing Hillary, because everyone loves doing that. And uh, the both sides people, Matthew Dowd and, and, and Ron Fournier, for a year and a half, did nothing but sit on fucking stools around tables going both sides, both sides, both sides, no matter what. And since then, Matthew Dowd has changed his position 180 degrees. And just denied mm-hmm. he ever held any other position and blocks anyone who says otherwise. And my position is simply, if you're that terrified of me, little old me, little old cornfield <laughs> blogger me, um, asking you a very basic question about your past as a member of a political party that you now find abhorrent, maybe the problem isn't me. Yeah, and I, I think Bob did make a really good point about uh, who 
people owe a mea culpa to. Yes, yes you do. And that sometimes it is quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, the repentance is quiet. Mm -hmm. And they don't owe you personally an answer. No. They owe the universe they an they answer owe, for what they, they do. The collective left who they have spent yeah. their entire life trashing and calling crazy and stupid and traitorous an apology. Right. And and my my rule of thumb is this. However loudly you were denouncing us and calling us stupid and insane, mm. that's how loud you should be apologizing. That's the volume. Yeah. Yep. Seems only fair. Yep. I mean, yep. you have yep. a big outside voice and you've been using your right. big outside voice to promote this monstrous party for 20 years. Maybe mm -hmm. apologizing mm -hmm. in quiet to a few close friends because you want to keep your job on MSNBC isn't sufficient. And maybe yeah. your friends at MSNBC covering for you and making sure you're never in the presence of someone like me who would ask you an embarrassing question is part of the problem and not part of the solution. But anyway, right. that's the discussion we had, and it was fruitful and interesting and fun. And uh, Bob's a good host, and we had a blast. He's a good uh, he's a good interviewer. Mm -hmm. He really is. He keeps it moving. And, uh, we enjoyed being on his show very, very much. I was expecting to talk for 10 minutes, so I talked really fast in the first five minutes. And that, it was like, oh, we're on here for what now? What what we're doing? <laughs> I kept thinking, are we going to be done soon? No, we're not. We're going to keep going. Kept well, okay. for Sandman I, can, Sims. I can go 90 minutes. If you sure. have the time, we'll do Sandman it. Sandman sure. Sims to come out with a broom and we're, just broom us off the stage. We were too humble yeah. to think he's not going to give us a full, you know, 90 minute interview. But he, it was fantastic that he did that. Well, that was very well, generous. By the time it's. By the time it's edited down, it'll be 30 minutes of just him telling me how wrong I am <laughs> and me going, well, see, you you're right, that. Bob. Yeah. You're, you're right. <laughs> I see the wisdom of what you're saying there, Bob. We are not going to talk much about Jesse Smollett today, except to no. say that, as you pointed out in our notes, it's water in the desert for white supremacists. And uh, there's been a couple of people who've had some really good comments about the right wing outrage machine was ready for this. Their tank is always gassed up for a right. see racism isn't real story. Well, and I think there is one other thing mm -hmm. to add to that, and that is there is this prevailing attitude that exists inside the beltway media mm -hmm. inside the commercial media mm -hmm. that um in order for the left to be legitimate it has to be 100 percent pure and perfect all the time you know i was going to ask you that question this morning yep. and i didn't get a chance to um why it is that we as democrats and i i do blame nancy pelosi for this in large part why we are so cautious not to martyr donald trump so that he's, mm -hmm. you know, his base can then celebrate him as a victim of Democratic overreach. Yeah. But mm -hmm. martyring Hillary Clinton was just fine. Yeah. Well, she can take it. That's the that, the short answer is she's strong enough and tough enough and and frankly ballsy enough and has been through this enough that it didn't matter how much shit they heaped on her. They figured she would just bear up mm -hmm. under it. You know, she's an infinitely load bearing. I, I wrote a a. a, a a post a long time ago called the karyotide a candidate who's fallen under the weight of her stone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, she's one of those, those women in the temple, mm -hmm. uh, stone women who are supposed to hold up the temple mm -hmm. and never supposed to collapse. No matter how much you put on her, you just, it doesn't matter how, how badly you hurt her and how much you insult her and go after her family. She's supposed to just smile and take it and go on. And that's the rule. And that's why everyone assumed she'd win because she just would take it and she'd eventually win. But if you punch Donald Trump m metaphorically in the face, He'll go fucking nuts. Mm -hmm. He'll go insane. He'll he, he does it now. Anything, any time he stubs his toe, he's on Twitter shrieking about you know retribution in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. and on, as is everyone on the right. At some level, given the actual terrifying story this week was not Jesse Smollett, but it was a Coast Guard lieutenant. Yep. Um, I think they're frankly a little bit frightened that these lunatics will take to the streets with guns and just start shooting yeah. people. Yeah. I think they're I think they're a little bit afraid. I have no evidence to back this up, but I have no evidence to dispute it. That they're the the right is wound so tight and is so armed and is so beholden and so willing to follow Fox News off the edge of any cliff that any attempt to shove Donald Trump aside would be would be greeted with an armed uprising. Mm -hmm. And it certainly feels that way because mm -hmm. everyone everyone walks around with fucking on fucking eggshells when it comes yeah. to these people. Yeah, it's so important not to offend Hugh Hewitt when Hugh Hewitt's on Meet the Press, you know, and he's lying through your through your teeth. There's a but there's a a baked in um, gravitational level assumption that's just this is the environment we live in that the right are nuts mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. They're liars and they're idiots and they're grifters and they're monsters and they're thugs and they're fake Christians and they're fake conservatives and they don't give a shit about this country. It's just baked into the cake. So we're just going to assume that whatever comes – whatever horrifying thing the right does this week, whatever whatever some wingnut does with pipe bombs or stockpiled weapons or shootings, that's just the thing they do. That's just the weather. You know, It's just something that happens. You can't control it. There's no point in blaming anyone for it. But this anomaly on the left – is is a big story. And, and as we're talking this afternoon, the Jesse Smollett story is on every single cable yep. news station. Yep. Uh, because it's an anomaly. It's, you know, it's literally man bites dog. But it is what um Atanahasi Coates said about Barack Obama, who he walked on ice for eight years and never fell. Mm-hmm. Um the we are we are apparently required to be absolutely perfect, like Caesar's wife at all times, because any little fuck up, any mistake. Um, anybody, you know, putting up the wrong candidate for president will destroy everything because you know, and the, the only thing I would ever ask on a cable news show is why would it destroy everything? Fill mm-hmm. out the ellipsis after the, the hidden assumption that you refuse to talk about. And the hidden assumption is, well, because the right's crazy, because the right is just mm-hmm. uh, they're trash people. They're lunatics and they're thugs and they're and, and they're monsters. And so anything you do, they have this huge megaphone set up and ready to go. And and but the thing is, it doesn't matter if you do anything. Right. They'll just make some shit up to get mad about it. This is this is today. We're getting outraged because um, Kamala Harris apparently uh, likes chicken and waffles. Oh, great! Is that a thing? Um, you know, it's, it's candidates eating food, and it's just the it it really is time to throttle the media way the hell back and start asking really really hard questions of the people who bring us the news and the and the people who run those corporations that why are you so why why is the Republican party's hands so far up your ass and, and this happened this week with um I'm jumping ahead a little bit to the CNN's worst decision so far which is putting in place Sarah Isger mm-hmm. that's how you pronounce her name uh as a longtime Republican operative and Trump stooge is now their political editor responsible f- with sh- for shaping their network's 2020 campaign coverage. And they're just going to ride that out and let her stay, and we're going to have yeah. empty Trump podiums 24-7 on CNN. Yes, we are. Yeah. And Brian Stelter, you know, the, the America's most credulous gossip columnist, uh, who just, he just writes things down and says them because people are saying them and it's out there in the world, uh, rose to the defense of his network <laughs> because... And if it had been if it had been MSNBC or any other network, he would have gone nuts. Mm-hmm. But it was CNN. It was an in-house problem. So you know he's the flack they put out front to stooge for this objectively horrifying story of CNN just saying, "Yeah, screw it. We'll we'll take we'll take a, a straight up Trump goon and put them in charge of shaping our 2020 coverage because both sides because balance." And again, it's just baked into the cake. Well, well of course they will. Because they're a corporation and they, they're horrible at doing news, but they're great at putting red ants and black ants in a jar and having them fight. And that's all they really care about. Brian Seltzer doesn't give a shit whether who wins or loses in 2020. Brian Seltzer cares about having a job next week. Right. Right. Anyway. And and the fact that you don't know about chicken and waffles, Drift Glass, means you aren't up on your John Cusack movies. Yeah, well. Because tape heads. Did you ever see tape heads? Don't get me started Which, on John Cusack. Okay, ironically. Uh-huh. Or... On topic, yeah. Tape Heads was produced by Michael Nesmith of the Monkees. Really? Yes. You are, you are, this is why we crush at trivia. Along with oh God. Repo Man. That I knew. Michael Nesmith produced Repo Man. And he produced Tape Heads. And Tape Heads, they make a commercial on spec for mm-hmm. Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. And I can sing that jingle, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wrong. Moving on. <laughs> so we talk about more, more about John Cusack? No. <laughs> Let's no. let's get back to our notes and talk about. Let's just say, go to the Bob Seska show, and I made Bob Seska laugh about, about John, Cusack. John Cusack and and yeah. uh, the broken record of John Cusack. Yes. yes. Uh, should we do a news roundup, or do you have another side note that you wanted to talk about? Well, I wanted to alert everyone that this is the this Sunday will be the final episode of True Detective yeah, season three. That's a good show, and it's it's really good. It's a good show. We enjoy it very much. And if you don't have anything to do this weekend, and you want to. 
yeah. binge watch something, we recommend it. Yeah. I understand there's some awards show that's happening. Oh, yeah. Sunday, um, I think there is some sort of awards show on. Something. I don't know anything about it. Right. <laughs> I guess they're not giving out awards and there's no host and there's no music and whatever. I don't know. Cinematography, I do know people, is important. Yeah. Yes. Apparently it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm kind of amazed that that they have, uh, in a sense, a monopoly on the most prolific and profitable export America still has. Right. Right. And they, they continually find a way to fuck it up. Yep. Um, yep. Putting on. It seems like Hollywood should be able to put on a show. You would think Hollywood you know? would be able just, to put on a show. <laughs> it just seems like it seems like they should. They, they should, should let Meryl Streep host it. She's always winning anyway. You know. Well. I've got 20 good ideas of what you can do, of yeah. who you can host yeah. and how you can stage it. But they just keep finding ways to, you know, let's put a, let's put a category in for most, uh, I don't know, a popular movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. No, let's not do that. Let's not make every other movie in history an asterisk to this new category. Right, right. It's, it's, it's such, and you watch the old Academy Awards and it's men in tuxedos and women in beautiful dresses getting up and giving eloquent speeches and taking awards and sitting down yep and it's, yep. that's all you it beautiful is clothes. And right right how did you screw this up well you know we we screw things up pretty good then i watch godfather 3 i go ah that's how they screwed <laughs> it, it up. can happen it can a great happen. franchise can be ruined it can't all right well let's do a news roundup and uh we'll we'll stop and talk about these things as they come through how about that all right that sounds good uh, i'll do the odd ones this week Nancy Pelosi says the House is preparing to vote in the coming days on a resolution rejecting Trump's national emergency declaration. Oh, Nancy. I find it highly ironic that that emergency declaration is taking money away from the Army Corps of Engineers. Yeah. To, well, <sighs> and this on, on, on Twitter, which I can still see, um, Donald Trump celebrated repairing an existing pa patching a piece of wall yep. as the greatest American victory since he, D-Day. He, so. he got called out on that by of all people brian williams last night yeah just said yeah. nope that's not it <laughs> i'm sure that'll turn him right around right. <laughs> michael cohen michael cohen has agreed to testify publicly before congress on wednesday of next week uh this is about his longtime work relationship with his buddy donald trump uh he was donald trump's longtime fixer and crony and i don't know what to say other than wednesday should be interesting i expect um a whole lot of angry tweets from Twitter. Except that he's going to be in Hanoi that day. Well, they don't we have don't the... even know if he's going to have Twitter access. I'm sure they have Wi-Fi on Air Force One. But I think they've told him he doesn't. I think they've said he, they've told him, they've convinced him in the past that he doesn't. Okay, here's a little side note. To to the sound editor, just cut out the whole part about Wi-Fi. Okay, and, and don't, don't let, don't let him, him know. Because <laughs> we know that Donald Trump listens to this show. Yeah. And uh, the, yeah. the Oversight Committee and the Intelligence Committee of the House have... Uh, divided up what they're going to cover with their investigations. Oh, that's good. And the oversight committee is doing all of the, the president's so-called compliance with financial disclosure requirements, campaign finance laws, tax laws, conflicts of interest, business practices, including his hotel in Washington, DC. Uh, the accurate, <laughs> one of the items that the <laughs> oversight committee is going to be looking at with uh, Michael Cohen is, and I quote, the accuracy of the president's public statements, oh, unquote. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, and, and this is a um, this is something we did touch on with Mr. Seska, which is, do you consider the endless torrent of tweet vomit that comes out of the White House to be mm -hmm. presidential statements? I do. I, I think yeah. that, 90, that you should... Uh, treat them like you would a flock of birds or a school of fish, which is just observe them in toto and see which way they're shifting to figure out mm -hmm. what is frightening this guy today, what he's what he's watching on TV, if you pay attention to him at all. But if your job is to evaluate the president's public statements, that means going through a zillion tweets about, you know, congratulating uh, Victor Davis Hansen on his genius historical research and uh, you know and congratulating rush limbaugh and lou dobbs on jerking them off successfully and that's right. got to be you just got to feel dirty after doing about that for about an hour it's just got to be yeah. really i got to autopsy this bloated thing and it's never yeah. going to end i didn't go to law school for this you know this is, right. this is right. what i planned on but you know sure we don't sure. we don't get the presidents we deserve we get the presidents republicans force upon us honest to god
You're up. Thing, things are looking grim for Republican Mark Harris in North Carolina. Yeah, he's even come on the stand and said, we need a new election. Yeah. And uh, some some middle fingers are going up around the around yeah. the universe about that. Now that I've been caught <laughs> so, and my son's right. ratted me out and my lawyer's a lunatic and everyone around me has pointed to the large pile of burning ballots I have under my chair, I realized exactly. tearfully that perhaps something has gone wrong and maybe we should do it over. <laughs> yeah, I have a, I have a better idea. <laughs> I have a much yeah. better idea. You, Maybe go, you to should jail. go to jail for fraud. You yes. go to jail. Yes. <laughs> and then we'll have another election with whoever probably you're, you know. With, with not you. Yeah. Yes. With mm-hmm. not you winning or your party. Yes. A white supremacist ex Marine Coast Guard lieutenant was caught plotting a mass terrorist attack uh, on the United States. A search of his computer found a hit list featuring Democratic leaders and members of the media that include uh, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, Chuck Schumer, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, all the media personalities, including Joe Scarborough and Chris Hayes, basically all the people on Crazy Uncle Liberty's list of racist cartoons that land in your email inbox. That's who this guy mm-hmm. was was planning to kill, and very seriously, he was planning to poison, uh, release toxins, shoot the place up, tamper with the American food supply. He had a cache of arms, you know, that was bigger than my bedroom. Um, he was serious as fuck, and. And this is this is the leading edge of these lunatics cracking. Um, mm-hmm. And this is not an accident. This is what happens when you tell your zombie followers that they must help you exact retribution, that you must help them rid the world of those troublesome priests who are bothering you so very much. Eventually, mm-hmm. someone's going to take you seriously. This story, however, has been crowded out by Jesse Smollett uh, yeah, really. and his fake charge to advance his career. So Bernie Sanders announced his candidacy for president. He's raised a lot of money and he has a lot of supporters out there. And we'll see mm-hmm. what happens. Yep. Uh, and that's all we have to say about that. Right. Other than we've dedicated ourselves to tamping down on intra-party knife fights. Yes. We And we have a young lady in our house who comes down the stairs in the morning in a Bernie Sanders t-shirt that I paid for. So <laughs> I'm not yep. going to say anything yep. to discourage her from uh, supporting the candidate of her choice. I, I will say that Sanders has uh, competition in the field for the progressive vote. And uh, that is a good thing. That means that we've got depth. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's that's yeah. that's just a and good in thing. Any political conversation about what a political party should do, even though Bernie Sanders is not a Democrat, um, his voice should be in the mix. Oh, yeah. That's he, he represents positions that should absolutely be part of the uh, Democratic platform. I need to be vigorously argued by um, sane, healthy, adult Democratic yeah. candidates, period, right. full stop. And, and a lot of what he has pushed for in 2016 is now Democratic orthodoxy. And that is also a good thing. Yeah. So, yeah. And it, it is funny to, to hear, this I, This is one of the things I, in my post that I did today, to hear Byron York uh, and Liz Mayer just wringing their hands going, well, you know, we're never Trumpers or we know never Trumpers or, or – but – you know, you're going to lose this if you go hard left. And by hard left, they mean, you know, you don't support gutting Social Security. Right. And you don't support some freaking austerity panel to make up for the fact that Donald Trump is spending money like a drunken sailor. Mm-hmm. And and you support raising taxes on uber wealthy people to pay for college education. And you support health care for everyone. And you support actually believing climate change is real. And we should do something about it right now. Those are not hard left positions. Those are popular American positions that if you live inside the wingnut bubble, you think are are crazy left positions because you've been telling yourself for 30 years, center right country. And it's not a center right country. It's a liberal country. Positions, those positions are incredibly popular right down the line. But it is impossible for those people, those never Trumpers, to acknowledge that that is true. So they're really frantic about what are we going to do if they nominate someone hard left? And they, they've all come down to one – all the overlap is on one candidate, Joe Biden. Boy, they love them some Joe Biden. And I just think it's hilarious that these people who fucked up their own party so badly that they can't live there anymore have the temerity to lean over our garden wall and tell us what we should be doing with our garden. Mm-hmm, no, fuck mm-hmm. you. Sit down and shut up. You don't know any – you clearly don't know anything about politics except how to fuck it up and divide people. Right. So right. go away. Shut up and go away. Let Democrats decide what the Democratic Party should be and what our candidates should stand for. 
and well, how but we I don't know who to vote for in the primary until Liz Mayer tells me what to do. Because she was so successful with Scott Walker and Roy Blunt. You just got to turn to that. So successful. Um, anyway, the Mueller <laughs> report is uh, maybe coming out soon, or maybe a summary is coming out soon, uh, or maybe a uh, fortune cookie is coming out soon, or some sort of Ouija board edition, or maybe a, a magic eight ball will roll out under the door. Uh, nobody knows nothing, which means everyone's speculating like mad. And that's all we have to add to that conversation. Nobody knows a thing. Wait until the report comes out, then make your judgment. Democratic 2020 candidates are already facing a coordinated social media disinformation attack, uh, Russian sourced. Mm -hmm. And we should be prepared for that. Yes. Uh, Supreme Court Justice, you might have heard of him, Clarence Thomas, uh, called on the court at which he works to re-examine, uh, translation gut, the landmark 1964 case that makes it hard for public officials to win libel suits. If you wanted to know what Donald Trump's plan was about rewriting libel laws so we can sue these bastards who say mean things about me and my little dick, that's what he's talking about. And of course, Clarence Thomas has never met a far right-wing conservative position that he's not perfectly happy to stooge for, and his wife is right. not perfectly happy to go raise money off of. And But that's not a conflict of interest because they're Republicans. And Speaking at Koch count, Brothers functions happens. isn't a conflict of interest either. No. Uh, the so-called no. president attacked the New York Times as the true enemy of the people and called for retribution against NBC for satirizing him on Saturday Night Live. He needs to be investigated. Yeah. Yes. A comedy show. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> the, um, the Office of Government Ethics has refused to certify a financial disclosure report from Everyone's favorite wizened <laughs> dried apple, Wilbur Ross, saying that uh, Sleepy Ross, the Commerce Secretary, violated his ethics agreement by inaccurately reporting stock holdings in his 2018 filing disclosure form. Shorter version, he lied about what he made and how he made it and whether or not the things he was doing was increasing his stock value and doesn't really care because he works for Donald Trump and fuck you, it's money and, and I'm And rich. breaking news, so. the... Um... Judge has ruled that federal prosecutors, including Labor Secretary Alexander Acosta, broke the law when they signed a, an agreement with Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, the They signed a plea agreement, excuse me, with Jeffrey Epstein. So that's unfolding as we go on. It's something my goodness, else. Breaking news here. It's just, this it is, is, this, it is like being Walter <laughs> Winchell. You know, let me just do my little, you know, you, you tap out that little, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> troops and all the ships at sea. Breaking, and but it's that way every five minutes in in the land. You know, I, I read a tweet today um, that Carolee agreed with. I forget who said it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was Ken Olin, a guy on Twitter. Um, and it it really sums up how I'm feeling like these days more often. I miss feeling optimistic. Yeah, yeah, I really yep. do. Yep. The transportation department is canceling a billion dollars in federal funds for a California high speed rail project and is actively exploring every legal option to claw back another $2.5 billion from the state. California Governor Gavin Newsom linked the Trump administration action to California leading 15 other states in challenging Trump's farcical national emergency to obtain funds for his border wall. Donald Trump is, keeps forgetting that the House of Representatives holds the purse strings. You know, yeah, he really he doesn't. doesn't know how anything yeah. works. He really doesn't. It's And it's, again, thank God they're stupid. Uh, Andrew McCabe has been such an around-the-clock feature at MSNBC this week that NBC has announced that it's considering building a 13-week episode weekly uh, drama series around him, tentatively entitled McCabe and Mr. Mueller. Oh, see, see but I did I'm there. I, I, that's a little joke. A little joke for you people who remember movies from the 80s or 70s. Speaking of Robert Mueller, he has recommended that Paul Manafort spend 19 to 24 years in prison and pay up to $52 million in fines and forfeitures. They are going after the other money. Yes, they are. They really yeah. are. They're going and and if we get to choose, mm -hmm. I'd say twenty four. Uh, if 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 we're if we're allowed, if we're allowed to vote on the spread, I'm going to vote for the twenty four years and the nineteen. Nineteen years seems light, you know. And and as Donald Trump has said, you got to be rough on these guys. <laughs> if you end up slamming their head into the police car door as you put them in the door, that's okay because you got to be rough on these guys. And I agree. Robert Mueller should stick this asshole under the prison for the rest of his life and let him rot there. And take away every dime he has, strip him of every asset he has, and make sure his name is is synonymous with treason and corruption. Sort of like Al Capone uh, meets Benedict Arnold for the rest of time, if it's within his power to do so. Um, Roger Stone can't keep his pie hole shut long enough to stay out of jail, which is, you know, typical Roger Stone. He decided he would, uh, again, threaten a federal judge 
Now that federal judge has decided that maybe he should yeah. shut up and sit and, in the uh, box for a while. She said today, no, Mr. Stone, I'm not giving you another chance. He is now no longer allowed to speak publicly about the case. He is allowed to say the words, I am innocent, and he is allowed to solicit funds for his legal defense. Other than that, he is not allowed to speak about the case in any form. So uh, as Matthew Gertz mm-hmm. said, I guess we can stop monitoring Roger Stone for a while. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. But I'm a Republican. I'm a friend of Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. I get to do whatever we'll I see want. How, we'll see how he, uh, how quickly it goes before he breaks that and uh, has to go to jail. Uh, Michael Flynn and several other Trump administration appointees ignored repeated legal and ethical warnings and promoted the sale of nuclear power plants to Saudi Arabia. Uranium One. Oh, no, that was Hillary Clinton, and it wasn't ever a real thing, and it never really happened. Never really happened, yeah. But but Michael Flynn and and a bunch of other thugs from the Trump administration really did try to get uh, uh, banned nuclear power plants into the hands of people who were not supposed to have them for money. Um, Again, everything they do is in itself a scandal so monumental it should shut down their White House forever. And they've done a thousand things. Yeah. And it's just the the sheer again, if if Republican behavior is is so corrupt and has been so rotten for so long that the media just says, Well, you know, but what about those emails? Which is what put us in this trick bag to begin with. When you realize that Barack Obama's mother in law moved into the White House to help with child raising for free, and that was a bridge too far well, for Fox. You wore news. that tan suit and you know, you forgot that yeah. flag pin that one time and you know, you gotta impeach a guy for that. Right. Uh, and again, as with as with Barack Obama, every time they would flip their lids over something like he put his feet up on the desk and he wasn't wearing a jacket. Um, 20 seconds later, and this all came through my email. Mm-hmm. Crazy Uncle Liberty was extraordinarily well coordinated across the country. They all got crazy, angry about the same thing at the same time and all up in arms because every day they needed a massive you know, pulmonary shot injection of outrage against the Kenyan usurper. It's always something right. stupid. And 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 90 seconds later – would come the, here's the picture of Reagan doing it. Here's the picture of Bush doing it. Here's the picture. And because these people are basically political farm animals who are incapable of learning anything, it doesn't matter how many times you hit them in the fucking head with a fact-based two-by-four. They will not learn. They will simply shrug talk about the weather and football for 20 seconds then move on to the next fake outrage. All right. I'm going to, add, I'm going to interrupt our news roundup to ask you a question. Uh, sure. Nicole Wallace was on the 11th hour last I've, night. I've heard of her. Yeah. She made the point that mm-hmm. the Trump white house actually mm-hmm. agrees with you that they are betting the entire white house on the stupidity of the Trump base. Yeah. Uh, they're assuming that the base will buy the story that three Republicans, Mueller, James Comey, and Andrew McCabe, all mm-hmm. three Republicans, Republican-appointed people, walked into some secret Department of Justice clubhouse and came up with a conspiracy mm-hmm. to, you know, have a coup against Donald Trump, right. okay? Right. And that the person who's going to sell that to the American people is Rudy Giuliani. Yes. And their entire White House is being bet. They're pushing all the chips yep. and putting it on that number. Yep. And she thinks that's a mistake. She says it's a gigantic bet to bet the whole presidency on the stupidity of the Trump base. I think it's a very safe bet. <laughs> I had a I, feeling I, you I, did. I don't, I don't think, <laughs> I, I don't know if it'll save his, you know, corrupt disaster train wreck of a presidency. Well, that, yeah. But I have, I have never gone wrong betting on the corruption and stupidity and racism of mm-hmm. conservatives. Mm-hmm. Never. I have never, I have, I have, as I've said before, I've sometimes not made the point spread, but if you, ass- every time you're trying to figure out what's going to happen next on the right, assume, because these people are, are welded to Donald Trump in the same way they were welded to George Bush. They're, they're, they're self-image. They're standing in the community. They're, they're the, the way they look at mm-hmm. themselves in the morning. They, it's not Trump. They personally would be unable to live another day. Their their personality would implode and unravel if they were forced to admit that they mm-hmm. were wrong about Donald Trump. They couldn't. They can't do it. They cannot do it. It is. It is. This is. Um, what was I just watching the other night? Uh, a man for all seasons. They're Thomas More, and and they're holding. They believe in the church a hundred percent, and you cannot make them change. And you can threaten them, and you can. 
rack them and you can scream at them and you can and you, you can bring every pressure you can think of in, in a reverse way because Thomas More was right actually uh, in his faith at least the way he looked at it but he was he was true to his faith they believe in Donald Trump the same way uh, Thomas More believes in the Pope and and they will not let anyone take that away from them they will not let facts and this is this is Nicole Wallace should know this because this mm-hmm. is the party she helped build. She created a base of 60 million reprogrammable meatheads who will believe yeah. anything Sean Hannity tells them. And I, I fully expect these people didn't lose their faith in the Republican Party after George Bush, after reality mm-hmm. slapped that dick out of their mouth at all. They just put on funny yeah. hats and went into hiding for a couple of months, but they didn't stop being awful, awful trash people. And they just waited around for the next demigod to come along and tell them it was safe to come out of hiding. And they did. And I think there's one other component to this that we're not pointing out which is how much Hannity has invested in Trump how much Fox News has invested in Trump staying in power how much they have invested in this Mm storyline that there's a coup going on against Donald Trump and that it's Hillary and McCabe and Mueller that need to be investigated and arrested you know they've gone full extremist we you know the enemy the the enemy of the people etc they've gone full in with that and uh that was a choice they didn't have to do that but they have they're the ones that this is what when i wrote about this this is what i was thinking was you know the people that have put the bet down is fox news and they are betting on trump they've gone all in so well they they bet on the bet and and from a just from a tactical point of view um as donald trump is the general or is the Republican Party because it was Bush before him yeah. and Cheney and so yeah. on. It's the same strategy. It's never give your base a place to retreat to. You know, force them to adopt the maximalist yeah. position that Donald Trump, Russian stooge, is better than Hillary Clinton. That the Democratic Party is the true existential threat, and anything we do to destroy them is legitimate because they are the true enemies of this country. Force right. them to take that right. position. You don't leave them any way out. There's no way. There's no way to surrender. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna admit Democrats are right. You're gonna let Democrats run anything. No, these people are in the bunker, you know, in the Fuhrer bunker with Trump. Going well. Uh, there's no place for us to go, but the Russian troops are coming from that way. The Americans are coming from that way, and That's it. I would rather That's it. not live in a world without Donald Trump. And they, you know, take the poison pill. They're not going. They're not leaving. And if if you don't understand that this yeah. is exactly yeah. the party that Nicole Wallace wanted to build, this is exact. This is what liberals have been saying for decades. Well, I don't know if that's true, and I hate to be the defender of Nicole Wallace, but I do think she was just in this bubble with Barbara Bush and pearls and a nice dress uh-huh. and low taxes and uh, you well, know, a, a, that's a, fine. A vibrant foreign policy, whatever she, that means. She lived up at the big house and didn't look at right. what was going on right. down the exactly. plantation. Exactly. Exactly. And, but exactly. Here's, but here's where this breaks down. And this is uh, and Nicole Wallace might very well you know be off the hook. I don't have anything against her. She's she seems to be coming along nicely. But at some point, you have to stop believing that every single Republican who now says every every think tanker, every ad guy, every uh-huh. analyst, every consultant, every elected official, their alibi is all we had no idea what was going on in the Republican Party. Right, Fuck you, right. you are the Republican Party. Yeah. You know, oh my god, it's full of racists and yeah, they've been here for 30, 40, 50 years. How did you Well, you know, who did know? Who was the guy who knew yeah. exactly yeah. what was going on inside your party? Let's you know talk to that did? guy. George H. W. Bush knew. Of course he did. He your boss who you love so much, may he rest in peace, mm-hmm. knew. He knew what kind of voters he yes, was he going did. after. And that's why. And that's why he hired yes. the people he hired to run ads for him. He knew what he was, was looking for. Right. And at that moment, yep. the ability yep. to say, I didn't know, I had no idea, is gone. And that was 1988. <laughs> so, Well, and she knew because she didn't vote for McCain Palin right. herself. Right. And it took courage for her to go on television. I've always said this. I agree. It took career courage. She put money on the table. Then and threw it away, set fire to her paycheck at that point when she said, I didn't vote for Sarah Palin for vice president because I couldn't when she had worked for that campaign. That was career suicide from the standpoint of Steve Schmidt, you know, and going, oh, yeah, now I'm going to go back and work for another campaign that I won't vote for. And I'll tell the world I'm not voting for it. You know, she did burn that. So good for her. But Well, can I I point out? uh Let me point out one thing. 
Just one thing. She now has a very good job at MSNBC, so it wasn't exactly career suicide. No, it wasn't career suicide, but I think the fact that she showed sure. that level in, of integrity is what got her that position. I, so, I, and you know, you know what career suicide really looks like? It's co- it's coming out against George W. Bush in two thousand and three. Yeah. Yeah. And sticking with yep. it and sticking with it and sticking with it and saying, nope, nope, nope. And after the Bush administration collapses and the Republican Party starts to put on their funny hats, career suicide is saying, nope, nope, nope. And to everyone in the media, it's not a fucking tea party. It's a fucking costume party. They're the same assholes they always were. And then when Barack Obama is the Kenyan usurper saying, nope, they're not independents. They're not, co- they're Republicans. And when Trump starts to come along and collect these people up like the little lost toys that they are, saying that Donald Trump is the Republican Party. Why the fuck don't you know this? That that arc, which is, I'm describing my own career, <laughs> that's career yeah. suicide. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why, you know, they won't let me play with Rick Wilson on TV because I might ask him questions like this. And that would be very bad for Rick Wilson's career. Back to the news anyway, roundup. Moving yeah, on. It's your turn. Yes. We're on number uh, 16. Really? Number 16 yeah. already? Uh Speaking of which, we have a birthday coming up this we month. We do. Um, 15. Yes, we do. She's getting her permit. Yeah. I'm My youngest is yes. getting her permit next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want to contribute uh, to the holiday fund because her birthday is bigger than Christmas. True. It, well, it, we won't say what no, it's called. No, we won't because it has her name in it. It's a national. But that's it's, right. But it, it's funny. We, we make it like it's, it's a it. holiday. Like it's a national holiday because... She's her birthday is exactly two months after the day after Christmas, two months after Boxing Day. Uh And so the day after Christmas, she starts planning her birthday celebration. It's like the other advent calendar. It is like the other advent calendar. And I've written a song about it, as a matter of fact. Yes, you yes, you have. Because my wife is a very, very talented. It's 12 days of youngest child's birthday. And it and the fifth day of her birthday planning is I'm shopping online. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she ma- she makes it this huge planning. You know, every week yeah. there's something new. I need these kind of napkins. I want this kind of cake. I want, and she's you know, not that, she's not Veruca Salt. No, she's not Veruca Salt. No, I, no. I, she's not spoiled, rotten, demanding. No. She's just no. a planner, and yeah. she and, loves her birthday <laughs> because she gets and each of the stuff. kids. And each of the kids gets the birthday they want. Really. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And their personalities are different in, in that way. Mm-hmm. You know, Junior Dude wants pizza in the basement. Right. With his, um, with his bros. And when he was in high school, he loved that I brought pizza to school. And I would bring yes. four or five pizzas mm-hmm. to school at the lunch hour and deliver them to him. And he took them to the cafeteria and was the most popular kid in school that day. Because he was handing out free pizza to everybody yeah. for his birthday. That's what he wanted to do. Yeah. And uh, middle child has a July birthday like I do. And this mm-hmm. is the first year since the divorce that she's going to be here yeah. for her birthday. She's always had it with her dad. So uh, we'll we're see invest- what she wants to do. She'll want to yeah, do we're, something we're investigating vegan, vegan, you know, <laughs> you know uh, recipes. <laughs> right. Vegan uh, and meal, pl- meal prep and, uh, you know, lots of tofu <laughs> <laughs> that's her yes, and she she'll will. wear her bernie shirt too and, and, ex- and there'll, it'll be, there'll be a listing yeah. of the so, grievances and so. <laughs> there will definitely be the a listing of, of the grievances involving yeah. the oldest brother her brother her older brother and her younger sister because middle child hey speaking yeah. of airing grievances <laughs> california new york and illinois and 13 other states have joined that lawsuit to challenge donald trump's plan to use national emergency declaration to rip off other departments for billions of dollars that Congress never approved, in fact, it, it aggressively and explicitly disapproved, uh, to build his fake border wall, which, as we've mentioned before, is not designed as a wall. It's designed to, as a monument to hatred. It's not designed to keep out immigrants. It's designed to keep out the future. That's what it's for. That's why they love it. They don't care if it ever gets built. They want the last Confederate monument to be the biggest and best of them all. Maybe those attorneys general should just show Donald Trump's tweet where he shows the walls already built and say, we yeah, never mind. Done, I guess done. we win. I, that's the strategy. <laughs> by, by this time next yeah. year, it'll be done, finished, and, and it'll be the greatest, biggest, most beautiful wall anyone's ever built. Yeah. Promises made, promises kept, Lou Gal. See? And finally. Over a two-year period, while, while he was trying to curry favor with the White House, former Maine Governor Paul LePage, oh boy. And yeah. his staff bought 
more than 40 rooms in Trump's D.C. hotel for Mm $22,000 of Maine's state money, taxpayer Uh, money. Right out in the open. (sighs) Right out in the open. This It really is prohibition. (laughs) The crime is right out in the open. It's aggressive um, uh, asshole uh, mobsters who own the cops who don't really give a shit if they're – because they're never going to get caught. No one's ever going to take them to court. They they own the town, and now is the time to just rip the place off for everything and beat the shit out of anyone who stands in their way. And that's why I think Walter Winch holding untouchables yeah, is the appropriate yeah. voiceover no, for I, our era. I see that, and and I think mm-hmm. about uh, the movie of the Untouchables when mm-hmm. the murderer in the story says, "Think about your your friend screamed like a pig. Think about that when I beat the rap. You know, just mm-hmm. walking away and." You, yeah. We got to toss these guys off a building, metaphorically. Yeah, and uh, toss right. this party, toss off, a this party yeah. off a building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the Republicans? They're in the car. They're in the car. They're outside in the car. <laughs> the Republican policies are in the car. <laughs> They're yeah. in the car. And then you have Ennio Morricone music playing da, mournful da, flute da, da, over da, it. Da, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is why we crushed the trivia. Really, we we're not good at anything else. We have minds we like that. trivia. Yeah, and next year we'll work on our uh, holiday Music. prep better and yeah. do a do a fundraiser for youngest child's birthday. No, we yeah. won't. No, no. <laughs> She'd love that though. She, I wonder if I I do wonder sometimes if the children are going to follow in our footsteps. Middle child definitely will have a web presence with her vegan yeah, oh, cooking yeah. and whatever oh, yeah. else she's doing. No, She'll they're have already extremely comfortable navigating that world and they, they're not overwhelmed yep. by it. Yeah. And they both have a really, really strong sense of justice and social justice. And Those, fairness the girls and do, you mean? They do. And, they and, do. and Junior do too. Junior do is, yeah. is going to be working on a political campaign come fall. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. As, as part of course yeah. credit. Yeah. He will. And he no, will. He'll, the, he's a political science major and he'll, He's close to Iowa. He chose the school because it's across the river from yeah. Iowa. So and if he comes back he'll be saying, set, I'm working but... on the Bernie campaign, all we're going to do is applaud him and buy him pizza and tell him what a good job he's doing. Yeah. And and if mm-hmm. Bernie's the nominee, I'm going to vote for him. So Exactly. If Bernie's the nominee, I'm voting for him. Yeah. Period. That's the answer that to end of my discussion. I'm, he's not my first choice. I will say that. He's not my first choice but this year. But uh, that's just because so many of his ideas have been adopted by other candidates. And I think there there's opportunity for fresh blood. That's my personal opinion. Bernie Sanders didn't have to put a Celtic symbol over a judge's face in order to raise money either. Roger Stone, eat your heart out. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. Oh. This week's internet kitty is Homer. Homer listens to our show via the laptop, and he is uh, doing so in a very—he has a very calm, relaxed face about it. Like I'm zoning out a little bit to the professional left. It's really good. Well, put on the goldfish next, okay? Because that'd be great. <laughs> I've been doing that this week. I've been floating on the four-hour YouTube to entertain <laughs> the cats while I'm trying to work. But uh, yeah. Uh, but Homer is an orange kitty who listens to our show via laptop. You can see him at our Facebook page and website, and you can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately one half of 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. It's time to join the 1%. Both our PayPal, postal address information, Patreon, all of that is there at ProLeftPod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Drip Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are busy munching their way through the gift basket they received from this week's sponsor. Freshly Freshly poured. Freshly freshly poured. poured. Oh, my Lord. Lord, It's it's freshly freshly poured. poured. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the humping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. 
copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.